Hello folks. Welcome to the channel. My name is Tom. This is Three Basket Living. And I want to say Happy New Year to everybody out there. The question of the day, the subject matter today is do wood chips deplete, rob, take nitrogen from the soil? Does a politician lie? And does a bear shit in the woods? There's your answer. But there's still a lot of debate about this little subject matter when it comes to utilizing wood chips, fresh or aged, in the garden. So then why in the world would somebody in their right mind take a pile of wood chips like this place it on the garden about three inches thick and do something like this. So this is how I'm creating a vegetable garden from scratch in clay soil. This stuff is you see that crazy old bat-minded hillbilly out there tilling in wood chips into the soil. You can't do that. I mean, everybody knows that you cannot do that because the wood chips are going to deplete and rob and take all the nitrogen out of the soil. <laughs> you can do that, and I do it. As a matter of fact, this is the third time that I have done so. Now, it needs to be understood, if you don't know already, that I have been in the process of developing and building a good garden foundation in the form of soil. Not dirt, which consists of clay, silt, and sand, and not compost. Neither one of those are soil. Good, fertile soil with good structure. That is what that crazy old hillbilly has been doing. So really, it is no big deal. And what I am hoping to accomplish today in this video is to try to ease your mind a little bit for most of you folks out there when it comes to the usage of wood chips on or in the garden soil. All right, so like I said before, it is no big deal. It's not to me, and I'm hoping that this simple-minded hillbilly can share some thoughts, some nuggets with you so that it's not such a dilemma on whether you should do something like what I'm doing or not. Let me start off with this. When it comes to the grass, hay, straw, pine needles, leaves, and wood chips, what ultimately is going to happen, right, is going to be some rotting, decay, breakdown, decomposition of this natural, organic, cellulose carbon material. It's going, to, it's going to go through this process, and that process is normal and natural. And for that process to take place successfully and to completion, there are certain conditions that will be conducive or need to be met. 
and there needs to be in place nutrients, nitrogen. So this process needs nitrogen. It's not actually the uh, media or the wood chips themselves that consume or take the nitrogen from the soil, but the nitrogen is being supplied for the decomposers, the microbes and fungi. All life forms, you know, uh, plant and animal, utilize nitrogen and we need it. So the answer is simple and yes, but let me give you this thought here. When we go to plant or sow seeds into our gardens, the soil, and those seeds germinate, they grow, they develop, produce foliage, fruits, and vegetables. Ask yourself this question. Do those plants and does that process, which is also a normal, natural living process, does it take, rob, deplete, remove nutrients such as nitrogen from the soil? Obviously, the answer is yes. And it's still not a big deal. Because what we do, you know, one of the ways we categorize some of our plants that we, that, that we put out in the garden, we categorize, one way of categorizing them is that we have light feeders and we have heavy feeders. Heavy feeders being things such as corn, tomatoes, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, things like that. Do we stress out? Do we worry about those heavy feeders? And, 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 and overcomplicate things when we, when we go to grow things like that? No, we do not. What do we do? We just give them some extra consideration. We compensate. We accommodate their heavier feeding needs of nutrients, nitrogens, that they need to complete their process of producing their foliage, their fruit, and vegetables thereof. So this is the same consideration and same thought process that I do when it comes to the wood chips or any uh, cellulose carbon material that I'm going to put, it, put it in the ground. You know, we have our hay, straw, pine needles, leaves, what we might consider uh, light feeders, and then we have wood chips, heavy feeders. Look at it like this. If the cat's hungry, feed it cat food. If your dog's hungry, you feed it dog food. If I'm hungry, give me a half a rack of ribs, a nice bowl of baked beans, and some homemade coleslaw, and I'm happy. So if the wood chips as a heavy feeder like corn and tomatoes is hungry for the nitrogen, feed it the nitrogen. Nitrogen is one of the easiest things for us to obtain and to input into our gardens or our compost operation. You got your own urine, if you're comfortable with that and you don't get all quiggly about it and you're healthy. You got your urine, you have manures, your animal manures. Speaking of the animal manures, if you're gonna do something like what I'm doing, I might suggest you know, doing this in the off season and get your hands on the hottest manure you can and freshest manure. Because by doing so, you're gonna get more and higher nitrogen levels and more microbial activity. All it's going to do is going to benefit you when you want to take this high density carbon material wood chips and help break it down or help those microbes and fungi to break this stuff down quicker and more efficiently. If all else fails, go purchase a 40 or 50 pound bag of urea with the MPK of 4600 and feed it the nitrogen. If you're not concerned and stressed about the heavy feeders like corn, cabbage, tomatoes, then you shouldn't have to stress when it comes to the wood chips. Same principle. Different processes, but same principle. So I do the same thing for the wood chips out here that I do for tomato and corn. I'm not going to be adding any more wood chips uh, uh, to till in to this garden anymore. That was, this is the last time that I'm doing it. And the reason is, is because my little old tiller uh, uh, just will not get down any deeper. Now, if you're asking yourself, well, why don't you just put the wood chips on top of the garden like everybody else and just let it break down that way? Because over time, you know, it's going to decompose and you just keep adding the wood chips. 
Well, in my little bat mind, I'm thinking that I want to create a good garden soil foundation. I want soil. I don't want dirt and I don't want compost. I don't want a big layer of compost sitting on top of my dirt. I want that compost to further break down into what we call humus and I want to mix that humus in with the dirt, sand, silt, and clay. That's what gives us soil. Good fertile soil with good structure and a healthy ecosystem. So another reason that I'm going about it like this and I've been putting a, a covering of wood chips because I started out having hay, straw, leaves, pine needles, shredded paper, all that light stuff. That's what I had readily available to me and the wood chips. I didn't have the compost that I have developed today on hand. I do now, but I didn't have it back then. So by putting the wood chips on, it served four purposes. Number one is that it retained and held in more moisture. Number two, it blocked out the direct sunlight, UV rays. Number three, it held in place all that lighter stuff and kept it uh, from blowing around with the wind up against the fence and stuff like that. And then the bottom line is, I knew I was going to be tilling it in, those wood chips. If you took a five gallon bucket of hay, straw, leaves, and pine needles, and you took in the same volume uh, a, bu a five gallon bucket of wood chips, you break it down, I got more bang for my buck out of my wood chips, more carbon material going into the soil or helping to create that soil than I do with everything else. That's why I'm going about it the way I am. So I'm going to explain more about that, you know, without turning this video into a, a big long video as I move along and I'm going to talk about my building of my foundation or my garden in future videos. So hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell if you want to see me fall on my face or have wonderful, great success from a common sense, simple minded hillbillies approach. Believe it or not, there's a reason to my madness. It's a science, but it's not rocket science. Keep it simple, stupid. That's all we got to do. And not let all the noise out there overcomplicate things for us. And people telling you you can and can't do this, you know, without giving some real thought into it. So I hope you got something out of this. Pass it along to other folks if you don't mind. Have a good 2019. Have a good day. May all your branches become full of fruit, and I hope to see you next time. Come back.